Welcome to Next Lab's expert Q&A series. This series was designed to inform you of relevant cybersecurity topics via expert knowledge. Welcome back to the Next Lab's cybersecurity expert series. In this episode, we have expert Brian Gallagher covering secure software supply chain. Brian is a CEO and co-founder at CodeLock. Now he will go ahead and introduce himself before we move into the questions. Hi, I'm Brian Gallagher, and I'm the CEO here at CodeLock in Northern Virginia, right outside of Washington, D.C. After the attacks on September 11th, 2001, I started my career with the United States Secret Service Technical Security Division. I have spent my life keeping people, products, property, and corporate profits safe. After the federal government, I completed my master's degree in information security and forensics, and I worked in the security industry for several years before co-founding CodeLock in the wake of the 2020 SolarWinds attack. Now a few years in, we're achieving our mission to better protect the nation's software supply chain, and I want to share with others how they can protect their software with secure software development practices. Thank you for your introduction, Brian. Now let's move into question one. What makes a software supply chain secure and why is it important for software development? Most people think that software is written one line at a time by a single person in a single location. This is a misconception. A report from GitHub states a whopping 97% of applications leverage open source code and 90% of companies are applying or using it in some way. A software supply chain can refer to this open source code, which was developed by another unknown resource, or it could be a contractor or outsourced development shop doing the work for you. The point that I'm trying to make is that a component of your finished product was built someplace else out of your control and you as the final software publisher are required to make sure that the final product is safe and secure for your users. So, a software supply chain should include elements such as ensuring the source code remains unaltered throughout the development process by unauthorized modifications or changes. You need to protect your code repositories within your organization from unauthorized access and tampering while having oversight up and down your software supply chain. Implementing strong authentication mechanisms and access controls to limit who can make changes to the code or access sensitive components. You should always know that the person committing code to your repository is the same person who was issued those credentials in the first place. So why is all this important? This mitigates security vulnerabilities by identifying both known and unknown threats before they reach your customers. This will reduce the risk of malicious attacks. In fact, software supply chain attacks have increased over 700% in the last three years costing companies on average over $4 million per attack. A secure software supply chain will reduce personal and corporate liability, as well as protect your company's profits while ensuring the protection of your reputation. Great insights, Brian. Question two, how do we ensure that software components are genuine and safe during the supply chain process? Software security should start by locking every line of code at the time of creation. In a sense, all software code should be locked throughout the complete software supply chain. We can easily accomplish this by ensuring the proper authentication of each developer through a multi-factor authentication process and by adding a secure code signing feature that follows the software through its development lifecycle. By using advanced cryptographic signatures, you can verify the authenticity of software components, ensuring that they have not been tampered with. Your organization should be capable of producing a software bill of materials, which is also known as an SBOM, that will allow for dependency and component verification. Secure software development audits should be conducted regularly to ensure that all supply chain components are legitimate and safe and that your organization is in compliance with government regulations and standards. Throughout this process, you should always use continuous monitoring that includes features such as real-time scanning for threats and vulnerabilities, 
anomaly detection to identify unexpected or malicious changes in software. And you should also analyze your data, highlighting the behavior of your developers and the software for unusual activities that may indicate security concerns. Thanks for your answer. Question three, what is DevSecOps and how can it help in keeping software supply chains secure? DevSecOps is the principle of combining three different parts of the software development process into one single focus. This includes the actual writing of the code, which is the dev for development, the securing of the software, which is the sec for security, and the operational components of releasing the software, which is the ops. You put all three together, and what do you get? DevSecOps. This is a fundamental change in how software has been developed, which has resulted in making software and their supply chains more secure. Historically, security would be considered after the software was finished, if even at all, and any threats or vulnerabilities found would be costly to go back and change. With DevSecOps, security is considered at the time of the original development and release. New tools allow for the automation of security and testing to identify and address issues early in the development cycle. Collaboration among development, security, and operations teams encourage cross-functional collaboration, resulting in multiple benefits for your organization. Some of these benefits include cost savings from early vulnerability detection and mitigation, continuous monitoring, which will provide real-time insights into the security and operational status of your supply chain, having rapid response to security threats, minimizing your organization's downtime during an unfortunate incident, and finally, DevSecOps can help organizations maintain compliance and security standards and regulations by incorporating security checks and controls into the beginning of the development process. Now moving into question four. How does continuous monitoring and real-time analysis empower organizations to safeguard their software against emerging threats? Real-time analysis includes the detection of anomalies and suspicious activities in identifying unusual network traffic patterns. By continuously monitoring your code, you can allow for early threat identification and proactive risk mitigation by detecting unauthorized changes to your code. This allows for a more effective response mechanism like adaptive response or rapid reaction to threats and automated alerts and responses, which take the guesswork out of threat detection. As an example, when the SolarWinds attack occurred, it took over 300 days to detect the intrusion and find the threat, resulting in billions of dollars of damage to companies and our economy. Popular containment strategies for hackers include the quick neutralization of emerging threats to reduce the harm that these hackers will cause. By enabling enhanced visibility and understanding through comprehensive system status monitoring and behavior pattern recognition, you can monitor your developer's profile using new AI capabilities. As an example, if your developer works, say, Monday through Friday in Ashburn, Virginia, but suddenly logs on at 2 a.m. for Russia, you can be reasonably sure that's not your developer and act appropriately. Data-driven approaches like analyzing insights for security improvements assist in the anticipation of future threats, allowing you to take preventive action. Remember, it's not only about locking the front door, it's also about having motion detection inside the building once the bad guys get in. Great, that brings us to the end of this episode. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Cybersecurity Expert series. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to the Next Labs YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. 